How's it going everyone? Hopefully you're doing well. Welcome back to another weak spot guide. Today we are looking at the badger and I'm telling you right now this is going to be a pretty quick kind of weak spot guide because there's not many weak spots on the badger. As you can see we have as always the 430U with 250 pen and uh, even the lower plate is like a 50-50 kind of... most of the time you will pen but as you can see down here 250 to 233 Sometimes you're just gonna low roll the pen and you will not pen this thing and nowhere else is available for you to pen. You cannot pen the cheeks over here or Rosita's face. It just bounces because it's about 330, 320 millimeters thick as you can see. Uh, so that means that even with premium rounds, it's a 50-50 whether or not it pens. <laughs> And when you do use premium rounds, it does get a little bit easier kind of around here. But still, this is about 356 to 360 millimeters thick. So even then, you're not really going to pen it. And the same thing applies down here. It's just whether RNG says yes or no to you. It's so pathetic. This thing is kind of like an E3 but with a much, much, much more deadly gun. Maxed out, this thing can have 4.6k DPM. And the problem with that is that it reloads in about six seconds. So <laughs> the idea of flanking one of these things is not really going to go to plan, especially if you're in an actual game where it's not just this thing that is defending the flank. If this is hold down, defending an entire flank, and you've got other people around, other enemies, you're not going to do anything to it. Literally nothing you can do. You just have to hope that you get a good RNG and go through this. Even with 340 heat, we are not penning the cheeks on this tank. Of course, the lower plate is a pennable section, but most of the time, you are not going to be able to hit the lower plate. Another thing that I do want to mention is that, as you can see here, it has some extra welding around this area and also the other side. This is actually... <laughs> More armor. So you can bounce the lower plate because that it really needs that. So if you are going to go and try and shoot the lower plate, make sure you go for the very, very middle because, yeah, that is how you actually kill one of these things. Now, the good thing is that you can permatrack and do damage to this thing, and it doesn't have the super, super wide gun arc like the tortoise. So you can just sit here and just permatrack it and do damage at the same time because there is no kind of the, the tracks don't go out and over the body kind of thing like the e3 um so you can use that to your advantage the sides on this thing are around about 100 millimeters thick at the back and you're looking at around about 180 maximum for the actual kind of superstructure kind of area so he if you have around about 105 and more then yes you can pen this um, but the lower pen HE is not really going to work. Around the back of the vehicle, yes, you can pen it with HE because it is only 38 millimeters thick. And that is for the superstructure as well as the hull. Okay, so now we are in the E3. And as you can see, we have 295 millimeters of pen, which means that you can go straight through the lower plate. But we already knew that. But it's not a green pen marker on this side or on the cheeks. So you could high roll, amazing. And because of the normalization with AP, it's a little bit less, so it's around about 318 millimeters thick, um, rather than it being a little bit more with um, like heat rounds and whatnot. So yes, it's possible to pen this thing with AP rounds that are around 300 pen. Um, however, if you fire premium, you can then pretty much 100% of the time go through the cheeks and you can also most of the time go through this kind of area here but don't go too low because then you start kind of messing up and it can hit some really weird angles and just bounce somehow. Um, so if you are going to be firing APCR at this thing, you can either go for a low plate because it's a 100% chance to pen or you go for the cheeks and just shoot the clan logo every single time if they have a clan pretty much around there you're good so yeah i don't really know what to say like this is just stupid to be quite honest uh 
Yeah, and I know it's a slow tank. It it doesn't move, right? It is a mobile bunker. It is only really, really good in certain situations. It is not like a chieftain where it can get into position and then use its turret armor and stuff like that. And I know that it's not OP in that respect. But just like with the E3, if this thing is played in the correct way that it's designed to be, which is a defensive tank holding down a flank and it's hold down, there's nothing you can do against this. Nothing, unless you have those super, super high pen kind of TDs to counter it. So hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe as it does all help me out greatly. And uh, let me know what you think about the Badger. Um, obviously it is not super, super OP because it's only really OP in those kind of situations, um, like I've explained, but it should have weak spots. Like, let's be honest, even the Chieftain and 279 have Capolas. That thing has nothing, just like the E3. Those types of tanks where they get into the position that they're meant to be in, where they're hold down and kind of just dominating that. Not to mention that the Badger gets 10 degrees of gun depression as well, because that's balanced. It really does make me wonder if they actually look at some of these tanks before they released Equipment 2.0, because before then the Badger was kind of just, eh, doesn't really matter. Now you can stick a turbo on it, you can put HP boost on it, you can put um, all types of different things on it, and also the field mods. The field mods make this thing go 15% 15, uh, 15% faster on all terrain and give it 30% suspension durability, because that's balanced. I'm not saying it's OP at like, and it's not some type of unkillable tank, but if you're at distance, then it is. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.